All right, so we're going to Petrolyph Castle. And it's been a while since my last run of this game, but... Oh yeah, and I finally got a PS3 pad, so I'm getting readjusted to the controls rather than the keyboard. Basically, the stage is pretty straightforward. Just try to get to the end. And, uh... His hitbox is so good, his jumping hitbox. Now here I turn around, because if I'm standing, I will get hit. Avoid the spikes. He even has a back hit. But he has no hitbox on the bottom, so... You can get hit that way. <laughs> this reminds me of Sonic Metropolis Zone. Towards the end when you're going on these things. Kind of messed up right there. I use the beam to stall so I don't fall on the line thing. Those things are annoying, they take so many hits to kill. Now your classic falling ceiling. This part is pretty straightforward. I chose this level because I felt it was the easiest out of all of them in this area, on this continent rather. <laughs> that was a little glitch, I don't know. I should have died there, I feel. Pretty much if you're patient, you'll pass this part fairly easily. And for here, you want to get to the bottom of the wall, so that when you jump, you don't hit your head on the top. For the spikes. <laughs> little dash down. This boss, he has like his eyes and his forehead get hurt. And um, I'm gonna use the flash comet attack because it counts as two hits. So why not just get through this a little quicker? And I don't know why every boss makes the same noise. It sounds like some dog being beaten up. Or, or, or. <laughs> every boss in the whole game, even the final boss, makes that sound. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> The wall is random. Sometimes the opening will be on bottom, on top, in the middle. And it's fairly straightforward. So now you get a omnidirectional starfire. Which is useful for one of the bosses later on, getting copies of himself. Now the next mini stage um, is the rivers of Shirol. Basically, I'm going to try to do as much mini stages as I can before dealing with the difficult main stages. Got the one up down here. This game is very generous when it comes to live. Like, they have crystals all over the place, and I don't know why that thing's not coming out. Come on. <laughs> Bad programming? I don't know. Sony made this game, so surprised they made some errors. They've made a they made a lot of mistakes when it when it came to this game. <laughs> like that, that shouldn't have hit him. Um, most of the errors is with uh, invincibility frames I feel. Like when after you get hurt you have way too much time to recover. And I messed up, so I'm just gonna keep going. And pretty much I make it anyway, so this stage is pretty straightforward. You can like comment through it all. And that's it. Now next stage leading to another main stage. This is another hand glider stage. And once again, excuse me, I'm still getting used to playing on a PS3 control. So basically while you're holding jump, you elevate. And when you release it, you descend. So you can like tap it, but and then with the shot, attack uh, sends that shot out. But while the shot is out and you attack, 
be, it won't have a projectile. It'll just be a fist. And this stage is pretty straightforward. Don't go to where the spikes are, kill all the enemies, get to the end. Cool music, I think. Especially first in this game. A lot of the music in this game seems like, I don't know, kind of Arabic, I would say. Listen to that instrument. Alright, get some diamonds, I get a life up soon, and we're done. Now this is another main stage that gives you a power up. Basically after four minor power ups then you're able- Oh no, I'm sorry. This is another mini stage leading up to the, the wing level. Uh, I didn't think he would start shooting as soon as he landed. Once again, fairly straightforward. These are like things from Mario Land 2 that run along the wall. It's incredible how many like old school games had enemies that go follow you know the axis of the walls. That was very common back in the day. Now with 3D games, that can't really happen because there are no really one you know, there's no real one dimension for the enemy to follow. Just to side -step it. Which is why sometimes I feel like 2D games can have more depth than 3D games. As far as design. Because they're simpler to look at and plan out, I feel like more can go into them rather than a 3D game where space is unlimited and technically infinite. So it's like, you know, what do you fill it up with? You have to add so many models, but enough about that. So in this stage, basically you want to follow the path of winds and not fall. That's like your main objective. And avoid enemies. So the wind currents is what keeps you alive and takes you places in the stage. The music is also really cool, so I think. And some of the wind currents take you straight down, which is like instant death. Uh, they give you a lot of jumps, so you can get an extra life. Like I said, they're really generous with lives. And the hardest thing in this game is the final boss, as well as the water stage. This stage should not give you too much trouble, if you just follow the currents and keep going right. There we go, door, press up. Now follow more wind currents and don't die. Pretty much I'm just guiding myself along. I didn't expect to stay up there so, so long, I expect to fall. You're above the whole world. Yeah, I don't like that dragon over there getting in my way. So basically, I get rid of him. I kind of take a little shortcut on that part. There we go, into that. Now this boss is easily abusable because he has- Oh, well, let me heal first. Alright. He has invincibility frames for a short second. So pretty much right afterwards, you can hit him before he like teleports again. So you can kind of just keep hitting him. And then uh, right there, he got hit with both shots. The horizontal and like the diagonal and the vertical. So pretty straightforward. See the lightning attack, which I think is the second best power up in the game. Stay tuned for the next part.